on this week's episode of Forever I Do. Every relationship will get difficult sometimes, but I think that we are able to forgive each other and move on easy. You can't go wrong playing a crystal gale. You know, you can't go wrong you playing, you know, your, your people Bryson and your Regina Bell. You know, songs like those are the go-to ones. This is Forever I Do. Sharing 29 years with the one you adore, Erica Nicole's story takes us from Trinidad to the Jamaican shore. I went to my first precious fit and this guy was dancing yeah. around me. He doesn't like to be called guy. This person was dancing around me. I mean, for the whole night, him and his friend would dance. And then at the end of the night, the person came to me and said, would you put, your, put my bicycle in your car trunk and drive me home? I was 19 years old. <laughs> it was my first precious fit and this crazy Jamaican, I'm Trini, was asking me to put his bicycle in the back of my car and drive him home. Of course I said no. But then it seems that when I was on campus, he was everywhere. I got tickets to a concert given to me and my best friend, anonymously. We went to this concert, it was Jasad, and he was performing a poem by Muta Baruch, and this poem. And I was like, wow, but he's talented. <laughs> and I think something started from after that. But we had a long running and hiding and coming back, being on campus for years. And then there was this one party where we danced and I knew it was him. I start before that because um, okay. You know, <laughs> on campus, the, the new students look new, but this one looked like, like she walked, she moved like she was on the campus, like she, she know, just come, you know. So I saw that first, and then later, um, various things happened with that thing. So, We were on campus, was everything was a date. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was, the whole year we, was just... We were together Yeah, yeah we, everything. You, I suppose we got to know each other more and more. And, um, okay. I don't know, it, it, I remember it the first, I remember the first day, we went to the movies, we saw... Oh, yeah, it was a scary movie. Yeah, yeah, and um, we saw Chucky. Yeah, <laughs> it was a scary movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, but I think it was, it was a ploy. Yeah. We were coming home. I lived on Hall. I don't know if you know Trinidad. I lived on Milner Hall, and there was this block called I Block. There were trees. The guys on I Block are very possessive and protective. We were coming back, this one scared me, I screamed, and all the guys on I Bluff ran outside, about to beat him up. <laughs> I had to defend and say, no, 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 it's okay, but, but it was because of Chucky and the movie, and he tried to scare me. But yeah. Yeah. So that was when we were young, you know, children, youngsters. We were apart yeah. for a whole year. Yeah after campus because he got it to be here before me. Some big phone bill and a lot of letters. And in those days it was an email so we and and those that period made it even stronger because she had now the opportunity to read my letters. And um, I 
Yeah. Yeah. So I'm an English buff. I taught English. English is my favorite thing. Languages are my thing. So if his letters had failed, I don't think I would have married him, really. Because no, you have to spell my name correctly. Your grammar has to be on point. And he did all of that. He impressed me that way as well. So we were boyfriend and girlfriend and he left and then he wrote and he wrote really well. <laughs> Not just the words, but the way he said so them. Cute. Um, he still writes well. <laughs> we got closer and closer together and then we became like, you know, the people in apart, they say. Um, we enjoyed each other's company and we were, um, we were great friends. And we we were kind of complimentary to each other. You know? and, uh, it's a natural thing that just became. Uh, we were not. We reached a point where we kind of knew, even though we never spoke about it, that that our spirit was gonna go. So um, it's not like one day you decide. It's just that. More and more and more in there. Yeah. What was it? It was not under a coconut tree, but it it was yeah, it was not it one was, of those. It was outside under some tree. Yes, yeah. it yeah. it was it was in my small and fro. And he asked me, and it was just it was a simple "Will you marry me?" And then I said yes. I said do it again. Ask me again. Ask me again. And he did. And then I called my mom and so that. But yeah, that was in 1989. She was that only child. And um, we kind of knew that she was going to come back to Jamaica. So I'd be taking this lady's only daughter away from her far away. And then from a big family with a lot of siblings. So, um, uh, I suppose to had to balance the thing. I, I thought it would be best to have the wedding um, in her country, where her friends and her relatives and her mother's relatives could. So, so we brought some of my relatives, my mother and some of my relatives, over. Um, so that was my kind of compromise to make sure that she could have, uh, you know, because after the wedding I was going to take her away, you know. So, so that was how that went. It wasn't a big wedding. Um, it was a fairly big wedding. Yeah. yeah I, at the time, I had just I had won two singing competitions. I was in church and choir, so it was a fairly big wedding, and I have a big family, so. I, it was it was a regular it was a regular wedding for us it was special because of our wedding but I think it was regular there was a lot of food a lot of drinks a lot of people dancing we had a, we had a first dance we did the whole the usual bouquet thing I think there was a gata thing too uh, yeah but not yes. first done today but um the, but, the most important the, the most memorable moment in the wedding I think for you is just that you forget is. Immediately after that, like, after we, we know we're married, she turned around to me and said, Ricky, we're married. Remember that moment? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't forget. I just didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was a moment, because yeah. you remember. Yeah, it was one of them. them Ricky, we're married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. I was 23 years old. Yeah. Still to come. He's a good man. He's a, I'm not going to cry. I'll tell you what I'm He's a good man. He's decent and real. I don't know. Um, I see lots of people doing stuff, but he's real and he's decent. Good. Good father. Good support. He's there for me always. And we're crazy together. And we fight. <laughs> but in the end, we know that we're coming back to each other. So it's fine. It's fine. But first, we kick off those heels and head to the dance floor as DJ Roderick takes us on a wedding music tour. For me, first, I have to put myself uh, in a frame of mind. I have to submerge myself in it, in it like as if I am also getting married. Um, it is important that who is hiring me, which are the, uh, the newlyweds, are totally and pleased 
at the end of the event. Yeah, big up to mommy and daddy and who else is coming to the event. You know, but first, they are the, 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 the top priority. Don't just say, I'm going to book Roderick and, 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 and leave it up to Roderick. Tell me exactly what you want. Do you want me to take a full and complete system? Microphones, um, speaker boxes, uh, console. Tell me exactly what you want. Um, you also have to put your playlist together. You know, yeah, I will add to your playlist, but you have to tell me exactly what you want so I can set the right mood for the newlyweds. There is a generic playlist, you understand? But you have to tell, because for everyone, your style of music is different than others. You understand? So tell me the song that you want to have your first dance, to tell me your song that you want to cut your cake, to um, tell me the song that you, you want to kick off when, when the reception starts. You understand? So I can put those songs together, but there are songs that definitely are generic love songs, you know, that you have to play at a wedding. Um, my first go-to um, for weddings are like a Kenny G. I can never go wrong without not playing a Kenny G because that sets a nice tone to beginning. But when you start with the whole reception vibe, you know, you it 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 it, it goes wild there. So it's all depending on the newlyweds. Mm -hmm. I've I've gotten a playlist. Sometimes I even you know use their playlist for other people's um, events. You know, but I've gotten like songs that they really, really love. It's and, and majority of the time, it's not really love songs, but there it's artists who they really, really love. It's 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 songs that that bring back some kind of memory for them. You know, when they just met, they you know the the, the first um, you know they've had together, and they hear this song in the background, and they want to relieve that moment within that time. So um, I've gotten a, a playlist. I've gotten songs that I said, really, you want this at a wedding, but. It's their request. Everyone will request this one and everyone would love this one. It's by Major. Um, this is why I love you. Um, you can't go wrong playing a Crystal Gale. You know, you can't go wrong you playing, you know, your, your people Bryson and your Regina Bell. You know, songs like those are the go-to ones. Um, the Power of Love by Celine Dion. You know, the Shania Twain. You know, there's so many songs, but Love songs is a gift. You, you can't go wrong with love songs. There's so many. There's so many. <laughs> you have people who request their bunty and their BD, their old school vibe. Yeah, they're tarot fabulous. You know, they want to dance. They want to party. You know, they don't want no boring, boring nothing. You know, but you will, you will create a vibe whereas it's a party vibe. And that's what they want. They don't necessarily want the entire reception be lovey dovey soft, this kind of vibe. You understand? You give them their, their dance hall, you give them their disco vibe, you know, you even give them their hip hop vibe. You understand? So it's all depending on the couples. And they would want their Sanchez that, you know, once you go into the whole old school vibe, you have to drop in your berries. You have to drop in, as you said, um, your Sanchez, you know. But uh, as I said, it, it, it all depends on the couple and it, it, it's a vibe that you as a DJ have to be mindful who else is there who you know you don't want to defend um, offend uh, I should say um, where your music is concerned you know so you take everybody you know, in mind if you had to give me okay. the Christian vibe guess the uh, against the other um, kind of weddings it's not too different um, it's all love it's all love songs. Um, when you get to the whole party vibe, you know you have to definitely um, think about, have, have the, 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 the newlyweds in mind what they really want at that point. But for majority of the event, it's, it's mostly love songs. And you can't go wrong with love songs. What's the strangest? Is it really strange? The weirdest <laughs> I've seen is 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 what they have on their menu but you know I, I won't tell you what it is but that's the weirdest um i've not seen much weird stuff but just what i see on their menu that's it i've been to weddings where the people don't want to leave you know even the bride and groom don't want to leave you know but remember when i have on uh, honeymoon to go on you know and they don't remember that but it's it's a joyful time and I don't stop playing until even the bartender leaves so you create that vibe and they love that vibe and you know 
it's a moment that you it's, 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 come on man, it's once, 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 once. But the the, the new the words I would assume. <laughs> It's your special moment, it's your special time. Go all out. If you can, you know, do your playlists, do your decor. You know, ladies, get your dress well done. If you want to have one like, like my good um, sister, Megan, you know, get one of those dresses. You know, go all out. You know, it's, 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 a, it, it's a joyful time for you. So enjoy it. So I would say go all out, full 150 if you can, you know, just do it, man, just do it. The DJ plays a major role also, just like the pastor, you know, because if the DJ not good, it kills the mood of everyone there, up to the waiter, you understand? So it's very important the DJ is on point with, you know, to, to the sets that he's playing, you know, have, make sure that the bride and groom and everyone who's in that event is enjoying themselves. Sometimes you will you will liaison with that um, best friend of the bride and groom, but majority of the time during that event, the, the go-to person is the MC because they also will be the one making that link to the bride and groom, you know. But um, most of the time it's the MC. I would not recommend you just walk with your laptop. Come on now. You want to set a mood and you want to you want an event that is memorable, you know. When you when you watch back that video that you know you say oh yes and even if you have ten or twenty persons there treat it as if you have an entire mass of people there you know just just do what you can do where your pocket can go you know that's it once you have your venue down um, link the DJ um, once you have it in your head that we are getting married. Um, Link the DJ. Link the DJ as early as you can, you know, to set that date with the DJ so the DJ don't double book or, or, or whatever. But as, as soon as you say, yes, we're doing this, link the DJ. Just like how you're going to link the person to do your whatever. Once you have the, the, the venue down, that's when the DJ will step in to have a look at the venue, to know how to set up, to know the layout. Um, when it comes on to, 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 the, to the venue, that's when now the DJ would link the decor person, um, the person for the, the venue itself to know, you know how to do their setup. So when you do your you setup, your setup um, blends right in the whole decor of the event. Because you don't want anything to stick out like a sore tongue. Yeah? Just inbox me. It, it, it's DJ R O D R I C K. So simple. Anything. Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. Yeah, man, just link me. <laughs> uh, make sure you enjoy. Hey, I'm DJ Roderick. You're watching forever. I do. Thanks, Roderick. Now let's get back to our couple, Eric and Nicole. We were driving in Clarendon one day, and we drove over our bridge, and in my head, I heard, I need a mozi. I have no idea where it came from. I sang it and he sang it. Same key, same note, same time. And we looked at each other like, what? <laughs> I need a mozi is some kind of, but I have no idea where that, but we have moments where we are completely in sync. He'll call me and I'll have to press up the, the call that I'm calling him because we're calling each other at the same time. It's very weird actually, but it happens all the time. <laughs> Maybe it's because they call me so often because okay, um, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> there's a, there's um uh is it two gang have a, a line of song say gone for ten minutes she called me ten times yeah we have long before cell phone we are like that constantly we continually in touch we are not out of touch I suppose it has to do with the the fact that we it's when we decide to get married. We we knew that we were going to take the vows seriously, and um, so you're going to become from two units to one. And it's not that you give up your your personal your individuality. It's just that we were two people who were going to become a, a, a married couple. That and we complement the, the, the unit but um, it, it became clear that we were we chose to 
come together and we took the vow seriously. And so, um, well, 30 years from then is a long time. So I don't think we saw today, but we, we were getting married. Yeah. And that means that we were going to become one. He's in my corner and I can rely on him for everything outside of relying on God for everything and he's there and he will do whatever he can to make every situation better for me. Sometimes too much, but yeah. From the beginning, when I first noticed her, yeah, um, so she, she really, she's a confident, sure-footed kind of person and that will always impress me. And then she's brilliant. She really is brilliant, you know. And she is, she's strong without being, you see, man and woman, she's a woman, but strong. But she's a woman, but she's strong, you know. Um, what am I saying? She's a strong woman, so she don't take on male characteristics. It's not that kind of strength you have. Um, I think in, in um, like Talawa, but you know, in a, how women are. So she's a strong woman and she's a brilliant woman. And you know, uh, you wouldn't want to challenge her on the road. She, <laughs> she is. She can't drive, and you know, sometimes when the man them try out man, maneuver up on the road, um, <laughs> they put them to shame, you know. So she's a confident, strong woman, and she's brilliant, and she is super talented. And actually, I was, I remember when I didn't realize how talented we were, and I discovered it after. Um, there was a singing engagement, and. There's a concert you're gonna do, and I didn't yet discover that how good she was. But um, we were already pretty close, so um, it's as if I didn't need that because even without that, she was all the things I said before. But on top of everything, she is super talented, and um, of all the things she can do, she sings really well, and then. She gave me this daughter who is amazing, just, you know, so you should hear the two of them sing together. They just, wow. He's a good man. He's a, I'm not gonna cry, I'm telling you. He's a good man, he's decent and real, I don't know. Um, I see lots of people doing stuff, but he's real and he's decent. Good, good father good support. He's there for me always. And we're crazy together. And we fight. <laughs> but in the end, we know that we're coming back to each other. So it's fine. It's fine. We have some things that we decide we won't do. So you use the term fight. We don't fight. Not we don't. Not she can't fight because she can't <laughs> hope to fight me. And, and we don't fight. So, you know, we have, you know, we, we, we really get any physical. We decide something to say, no weapons. So we've been married for 30 years and we don't ever, we can't think of a moment when a situation when we would raise a, a weapon. I think if we, if we carried guns, we would be able to, to just, no matter what. So we never had that kind of fight. But the thing is that you can't, every relationship will get difficult sometimes, but I think that we are able to forgive each other and move on easy. So we don't hold, um, I, I, we're not able to hold grudge and be mean-spirited and even, we, it's, you, you see like how sometimes people wicked to each other. I. I think if I'm cruel to her, I'm being, it's like I'm cruel to myself, you know? So, um, there's nothing she can do to make me 
do anything real cruel to her because I would feel like I'm being cruel to myself. You see, if she's in the supermarket and we call her and she reached the car and I wanted something, I have to make sure that I don't cause her to know what it is that I wanted because she will turn back no matter what. Even if we're not on good terms, you know? So she will do her best to please me. And I suppose, um, I don't know, she will say the same, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just fall in love and get fooled. Um, love is a decision. You can fall in love 20, 30, 40, 50 times, trust me. They have good looking, sensible man all over the place. But you have to find the person that's for you. You need to be sure. You need to know that God is in it. You need to be compatible with this person and have a plan. Don't just fall into it. Have a plan. Talk. We talked and talked and talked. We talked. We talked. I mean, we would just sit down and talk for hours about everything so that you would know the other person's perspective. Like when we were talking, this person was not into Christmas. And I was like, well, <laughs> we have a problem because at my house, we do presents for everything and Christmas is special. And now he's Mr. Christmas. But I mean, of course, we cannot do Christmas. So, I mean, you talk to the person because you, you have to know what to expect. When we were getting married, he said to me, listen, I will take most things, but don't ever embarrass me in public. <laughs> so, I mean, you talk to the person because you, you have to know what to expect. When we were getting married, he said to me, listen, I will take most things, but don't ever embarrass me in public. <laughs> so that's a thing we have, you know, certain things. So you know where to go with your person. Don't get married and then go, oh, but I never know. Because you should know. I mean, it's, it's, there's always going to be stuff you discover after getting married. But don't give yourself the disadvantage of not knowing anything and just going, but I love you. It's not enough. You got to love him. You got to love yourself. You got to love God. And you have to know that you're going to go at it for good. So foolishness will come. People will come. Bad things will happen. Death, death, both of them. But you have to know that you are the person there for life. That's, that, that's how it is. But it's like how my wife know that she just cannot embarrass. That's a deal breaker, embarrassment. And thank God we have been, how much years? It has never happened. No matter what we're going through, um, we, we just have that. And I remember once he said, don't ever, don't, 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 don't pull me by my clothing. <laughs> so, you know, like um, people who have cats know that if you, you can't hold a cat by them tail, you know, no matter what you do to them. Right, so I kind of know. And that's just some of the examples of the things. But So you have certain things that you have to learn about each other. And you have to make sure you do your best to um, avoid, you know, messing, messing things up, you know. Because you see, as humans, sometimes we have some, we are irrational in some way concerning certain things. So I have to learn about her and know the, what they call idiosyncrasies, the things that she get ticked off. And likewise, she have to learn those things about me. So over years, you learn it. But here's the thing now, it gets a little complicated because as you mature and you grow and life change, you kind of evolve, so you kind of change. And the truth is, you kind of kind of influence each other too. So some of my bad ways, you now you she start pick it up, and I start pick up some of hers, and so the thing becomes a little challenging. So it's a it's a lifelong lesson that you have to keep learning about each other, and be attentive, and make sure that you do what you need to do to keep it together. You know. Um, but that beginning where you start, you have to start with a commitment. And if you're going to make these vows, if you don't take them, if I lie, you I tell nobody. So this is why it is so important to make sure that you really decide that this is what you're going to do. And I think a lot of people take, take the vows lightly in the first place. So you have, when, when trouble comes, no, you can't really. One of the things that, that we had, I remember when we first got married, you said that you would like to have a few years. I think you said four years. 
before we have children. And I was not, I was not up for that. But I said, well, I think the four year going to turn into one or two or three and say four coming. But it turns out that we, we did have those four years, not sort of by cho- choice, but it was just going to happen that way. So our first child came actually four years mm-hmm. after. Not because we kind of plan it that way, but it kind of just unfolded that way, thankfully, I must say, because um, I think later on that helped to strengthen the marriage because you get to be together without, because children change dynamics and get a little complicated and, and even very difficult. So we were unmarried and happy as a lot to come to, together for four years before we had our first child. And then, I think we probably waited a little long for the second one, but, um, but uh, the, the dynamics changed again after the first child, and then another one came, and then, and then... So it's a journey, and as you go through the journey, you have to be aware that you are not the same. There's two different people, and though you complement each other, but there are some difficulties, and you have to be aware you have to be attentive and sometimes sometimes you don't see some things coming and you know you pay attention. For example, um, there may be something that I would do that would upset her. And then I, I kinda pass that and I'm no longer doing it, but she's still reacting as if I'm still doing it. And vice versa, you know, so we have to kinda say, Oh, so you know, we have gone past that. Okay. <laughs> you know, so you have to learn. This is the unequally yoke thing is another thing. If you are too if you have too many things that you can't live with, too many deal breakers, as they say, uh, maybe you shouldn't be together. Uh, but you have to you have to work at it and keep it together, and it's changing all the time. So you never happy ever after is a myth. It, that's not how it works. You know, it's a dynamic, and you have to keep it keep it moving. Thank you so much, Eric and Nicole. Here's to many more years of happiness and wedded bliss. On the next episode of Forever I Do... We went to the Carib. We watched Bad Company. We left the Carib, went to Carlos Cafe. Locked down Carlos Cafe. Went to... Priscilla's. Priscilla's. The people are running out of the place for 4 o'clock in the morning. At the place, And um, from there, we went out a couple more times. And, um, sparks and, flew. Yes, yeah, sparks flew. Mm-hmm. Yes, but no. Plus, we show you how to make that dream wedding a reality with the go-to partner for destination weddings and events, Thai Flora Lux. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Makeup services by Nardine Makeup. Coordination and planning, Shakima Hines of Island Bride, Jamaica. Set decor, Thai Flora Lux. Forever I Do is filmed on location at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, your wedding destination in Kingston, Jamaica.